Hi, everybody. Chris Petrie here. We're going to actually have a fun time. We're going to do a quick rendering of a watercolor painting using the glazing technique. We're going to show you how you can create a beautiful street scene quickly, effectively, using all the really uh, tried and true techniques and methods in watercolor. So stick here with me. We're going to go through each step of the way so you can kind of see how it's done. And by the time we're finished with this video, you'll completely understand how you can get a beautiful painting like this done in a matter of a half an hour to an hour. Um, if you make it a smaller painting, it'll be less time. If you want to make it a larger painting and use a larger paper, of course, it takes a little longer to work on a larger paper. You might, you know, it might take you like an hour, hour and a half, but you could use this in a small format, maybe like a six, like an eight by 10. You should be able to get this done in like an hour's time. Stick with me here on this video. We're going to show you step by step how to do it. Okay, we'll be right back and we'll go over every detail for you. All right, Chris Petrie here. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming by. We're going to have a real exciting time right now. We're just going to cover a few small little tidbits of information about watercolor. That's really, I think, going to kind of sway you towards maybe giving uh, giving yourself a start with watercolor. And you can always look up my Extreme Beginners videos. You just type in Extreme Beginners into the YouTube search window up on the top of YouTube. If you type in Extreme Beginners and you even write down my name, type in my name, Chris Petri, C-H-R-I-S-P-E-T-R-I. You'll see that I have a lot of beginner videos. Over the last year, I've been making a lot of beginner's videos, so you can jump on in there anywhere, look at some of my old archived uh, videos as well. We're always making new beginner videos each week uh, going forward. So if you subscribe down on the right-hand side below, you'll get all my new beginner's videos as well. You'll get to watch the advanced um, uh, videos too. I do advanced um YouTube videos and tutorials every week as well. So we're doing lots of information here on watercolor, lots of videos and tutorials. So just jump on in, get in, start working, have fun. You start off with the beginners if you're just starting out, never if you've never done a watercolor before. So this is just kind of a, a video where you're kind of going to see the showcase of how beautiful watercolor is in a really quick, uh, simple format in just five or ten minutes. So um, the first thing we'll just say, the first concept would be your uh, contour drawing. So we'll just say that a contour drawing is sort of like your start for your uh, drawing. Before you do your contour drawing, you're going to just do a preliminary, prelim, preliminary sketch. That's where you carefully, methodically, so your preliminary sketch, you carefully, methodically uh, light draw in a light pencil sketch first to get everything just the way you want it. And if you have to erase a little bit, it's not hard because you're just doing a very super light pencil sketch, which I have down here on the paper already. Then after that's completed, that takes the most time for your drawing, your preliminary sketch. Again, you're doing your, taking your time methodically, carefully putting down on your paper, very light pencil sketches of where you want everything to be in your, your rectangle, your, your picture frame, your canvas, your watercolor paper. The next thing is contour drawing, and that's what we'll do next. We're going to go over our preliminary sketch with our contour drawing, which is just a darker pencil line over the light sketch so we can actually see it as we're working. We need to have a little bit of a darker sketch on there. And the third thing we'll do is we'll do our painting, our glazings. This will be a glazing technique, so you'll hear me talk about that all the time on my channel. So start going in and looking at all my videos that I've created in the past, you know, over the last couple years. and. Also, too, every week we're going to be covering all of the same information. So the painting, the watercolor painting, painting will be the third thing we're going to do. Okay, so that's the basic plan of what we're going to do here quickly, just to kind of show you how fun and exciting watercolor is. So let's go and start here. We did our preliminary sketch. Now we're just going to go over with a darker pencil line and get in our, we're doing a cityscape here, a city scene. A street scene. Beautiful buildings, cars, people walking on the street. Maybe it's a little bit of a misty day. There's some a little bit of rain and drizzle. So I'm just going over what I already did in my preliminary sketch, just so you can kind of see the darker, the darker lines. So I have the buildings up here and over here. Then we have a beautiful uh, light, city light post and light and lamp. And then here we'll do a um, Traffic signal lights here. Simple. We're just having fun here. 
Then we're going to do some figure. Let's do the cars next. We'll do a couple cars over here. And they're maybe parked on the side of the road here along the city street. Just uh, maybe they're in shopping, getting some things in the store quickly. They're going to come back out. And then we have the other car over here. So a couple cars, a couple vehicles with some windscreens. The front of the cars, the windshields and the, the grills of the car here and some lights. Just simple. And then here we'll do a few figures. Let's do, um, again, it's maybe drizzling, a little bit of rain. So we'll have a couple interesting umbrella shapes over the tops of the figures. And then we'll just make our figure shapes here. And the heads will all be the same height. But the figures might be larger or smaller according to how close our or farther away they are. So we, we want to keep the heads the same height. So if you're drawing figures, just a quick little tidbit, you know, if you're drawing figures in a, in a street scene or even in a landscape painting, whatever it is, if you keep the heads of the figures all at the same height, you can make the figures larger and smaller. But as long as all of them have the heads at the same height, you'll, you'll have a correct looking painting and drawing. So this figure here is closer to us. This figure's a little further away, and this one's at the furthest distance away. But they, their heads are all at the same height, as you can see here. And then their bodies are a little larger as they get closer, and a little smaller as they go away. And we'll do a reflection on the, on the ground here. So maybe there's, some, there's a crosswalk here, so we have a little crosswalk. And then these are all buildings over here. So we'll see the buildings and some windows maybe on the buildings. And we'll just do a couple little minor details on the, on the buildings for fun and just to have a little bit of detail in our painting. But I just want to show you the basics of how beautiful watercolor is and how you can kind of just create a beautiful painting in just really five or ten minutes. So now that we have this completed, I'll just take some fresh water in my water container. I'll pour out some fresh clean water. I just have a few different brushes. I'll use a flat brush and a um, round brush. So my round brush is actually um, comes with my watercolor beginners watercolor set. Which you, again, you can look up extreme beginners. You'll see my watercolor paints that I use and brushes. But that's my sharp, small round brush that comes with the watercolor set. It's a prang called a prang set. And then here we have a, a flat brush. Um, and this is a Princeton Art Brushing Company synthetic. So these are both synthetic brushes, inexpensive, great for beginners. And they um, actually handle beautifully if you're just starting out. Not too much uh, water. Uh, you won't have too much water flowing off your brush. If you have expensive watercolor brushes, they tend to hold more water and can be a little more difficult to handle. So if you have synthetic brushes to start with, you're, you're fine. And if you're kind of already a grizzled pro and you've been around a while with watercolor, well, then you don't have to worry. You can use any old brush you have and your fancier brushes, you know, like the natural hair brushes and so forth to do this type of painting. But we're just going to cover the whole paper with water. Glazing technique, so our first, first wash is going to actually cover the whole paper. So we're just going to do a simple glazing. Let's take a little bit of alizarin crimson over here, like that. We also have um, sepia tone paint, which is kind of like a like a brownish black. So we'll leave that over here. That's going to be our darkest dark tint. And then we're going to have our alizarin crimson over here, like so. And then a little bit of cerulean blue over here, French ultramarine blue. So I'll just mix out some colors a little bit, some yellow ochre. Let's just get some simple colors out. And then let's get some Let's get a light wash of that alizarin crimson with a tiny bit of the sepia tone in there just to kind of mellow it out a little. And look at that. We've got the whole paper covered now with a beautiful light, kind of a light rose color, beautiful, over the whole canvas, the whole painting, the whole watercolor paper. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually start to um, let this dry a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a break and use a blow dryer and blow dry off this first wash. That's the most important thing you have to do at this point. But to make this the video more brief and concise, I'm not going to sit here and let this dry for like an hour and let the video tape run. I'm going to stop the video just for a few minutes, use my blow dryer, blow dry off all of this paper here with the paint, let it dry 100 percent, and then we'll come back and we'll do our last washes over the top of this just so you can kind of see how the the 
glazing technique works in watercolor and how beautiful it is. And we'll finish up with the details after that. But again, we're almost halfway there. So hang in just a few more minutes. I'll be right back. I'll get my blow dryer, blood, you know, get this all nice and dry and we'll come back and do our finishing washes. Okay. All right. We'll be right back. All right, we're back. We let our wash dry. So we let our first wash dry. You can let that dry naturally for an hour or two. Your first wash with a little bit of alizarin crimson over the top of your watercolor paper for your first wash. And I, I did add a little bit of yellow ochre as it was drying for a few minutes, but other than that, that's all we did. And then I used the blow dryer to dry it off for five or 10 minutes and then we're ready to go again. So let's start back in. Let's start getting our dark buildings here. So we're gonna use the um, yellow ochre and um, we're gonna use yellow ochre and sepia tone. And we're gonna get some of the darker darks here. So let's get some of those dark colors on the paper. And again, I'm using a flat brush. Look how easy it is to use a square brush or we call it a flat brush or square brush. See how easy that is to use? And I'll go around the cars there a little bit. Maybe over here, I can use a little bit of the darks around the, the grills of the car, but I want to keep the I want to keep the uh, the windshields, the windshields of the cars uh, light. So I'll leave that light white paper. But you can see the rest I've done really simply. Look how, and then a couple details on the building tops here. A couple of interesting things up there. And we'll put some windows in in a little while on that. And then over here we have architecture. If you if you like to do city scenes or architecture, anything like that. Um, square brushes and flat brushes are perfect to do the work because they, um, and we'll go around the umbrellas here where the figures are. You can see those figures we had. The umbrellas are there. Some pointy umbrellas. And there's some. Then we'll lighten up the wash over here a little bit. See how I added, I added more water, less paint, more water, just so we can kind of have a little bit of more smooth um, looking washes here. Not all dark. We can use some more darks over here. Let's get some of that meat, more of that sepia tone. And again, look at that. Wow. Get some of that beautiful dark sepia tone along this side here. And then we just kind of mellow it out a little bit like this as we go more into the, going more into the center of the painting. And there's some more interesting colors there. Let's use some blues in here too. Let's start working in some cerulean blue. Maybe you can get a couple French ultramarine blue and cerulean blue mixed. And you can start mixing in some blues to your mixes. You can add a little bit over the top of things just to get some warm and cool effects. We might not want to have everything looking, you know, um, gold and brown and blackish, you know, so this is kind of blacks and browns and golds, nice, beautiful darks, but you can add some blues in there too. You add some of your French ultramarine and blue, uh, cerulean blue, just to make a little bit of warm and cool effect, you know, it kind of looks really beautiful when you can mix warm and cool colors together. And we are almost completed here. Let's get some blues in here for the windshields. Wow. Bring in those windshields with some of that cool more cooler windshield with colors with the blue, a little bit of the blue, French ultramarine blue and uh, cerulean blue. There we go. For the vehicles, a little bit of the dark there too, some blue there. And we'll just blend that all in nice, some more reds. And again, we want to use some of those reds too. Let's mix it up. But you can already see we have a wonderful looking watercolor already. And uh, that's the sky over there, the bright sky in the morning time. Maybe this is in the evening or the morning time. Um, so sunrise or maybe sunset and we're in a city scene. And look how beautiful. We already have this 90% complete. I think what I'll do is I'll take one more quick break and we'll just finish up the details in just a second. So I hope you'll stay just for one or two more minutes and we'll finish up everything. We're just going to do the figures. We'll finish up the figures and the light posts and the lights here the traffic lights and will become 100% complete. Okay, and you'll just see, this is what watercolor is all about. Having a great time getting your washes in. You can scratch in a couple details like this. 
for some windows. You know, you can have fun and be creative. You don't have to stick by any one game plan. You can do you know anything you want. You can have fun and scratch in some details like that. Okay, we'll be right back. We'll just finish up in the next two minutes uh, our figures, uh, beautiful umbrellas, and a slightly rainy day, drizzly day here in the city. And um, we will have absolute fun. The last part of the watercolor painting is always the most fun when you're just doing those last bit of details and everything's coming together just right. Okay, all right, so get excited, watercolors. And remember, subscribe below on the right-hand side because this is what we do every week on my channel, week after week, month after month, and year after year. We're doing nothing but watercolors, 100%, and we're covering all the details of watercolor, whether you just started out today or whether you've been painting a year or two or if you've been painting 10 years but you still want to learn some more interesting details about watercolor, stick here on my channel. We're having fun all together. We're a great group of people here, all watercolor artists, so stick with us. We'll come right back in just a second, and we'll finish this painting within one, or, one minute or two minutes. We'll be done. Okay? All right. Okay, we're back, and we're doing our last bit of details here, everyone. Let's uh, remember we let the paper dry. If you have to use your blow dryer again on your second uh, glazing when you do these darks, you might want to do the blow dryer again or let it dry naturally for 20 minutes, half an hour. It's up to you. But I think you should be good if you um, uh, let it dry naturally for you know half an hour, maybe an hour, or again use the blow dryer if you have to. If you want to go do f work on this faster and get it done quicker, that's fine. So now we're just going to go in. We're going to get our sepia tone, and we're going to do our our traffic lights here. So we're just going to do our traffic lights. Usually there's three lights here. So we have three lights there in our traffic lights, and this one over here is facing the other way. So we have kind of the this light over here facing the other way. And then we have the um, post, the light, the uh, traffic light signal post there. So we'll do that, and we'll just use our round brush here, and we just kind of do a little bit at a time. If you're doing these uh, light posts and uh, traffic signal posts and telephone poles and whatever you want to do as far as like these long lines Just do them a little bit at a time. That's the secret to doing Like if you're doing street scenes you do a little bit at a time you stop You reposition your hand on the paper and you go up and do a little more you stop again And you go up a little more stop again move your hand rest your hand always on the paper if you can or Around the outside edges of your work table wherever you're working you always want to sort of have a stable place you're working. You don't want to really be working with, um, you know, on an unstable surface. You want to have a good... There we go. And we have a light. There we go. So we have a beautiful lamp, light post. Um, we have our traffic signal lights. Now we're going to do our figures. There we go. This figure is a little larger. There we go. They're hustling and bustling in the city and you got the little bit of reflections of the legs on the ground there on the wet uh, ground on the wet uh, pavement as they're walking um, we also have another figure over here we'll just use all this sepia tone here for the figures and we'll just kind of melt them together so that I just have them sitting or standing and walking all in one this one might be a little bit uh, we'll have a few more figures over here and just kind of get basic idea is you know, larger upper body, and then as the body gets closer to the ground, it's thinner, and you have smaller legs. That's really little, like kind of like a carrot. If you kind of think of a carrot when you're painting a person, a little bit fatter at the top, and then thinner down at the bottom where the legs are, you'll be fine doing figures like this. Okay, so we have our figures in. We'll use some cadmium red for um, and yellow ochre for the faces of the figures. So it's a little bit of an orangey red. So I use the cadmium um, red and a little bit of yellow ochre. And we'll do the faces just like that. Beautiful. Look how good that looks. Okay. And you can even go around the umbrellas a little bit with a little bit of a darker wash like this.
you can always blot with a little bit of tissue, blot up with a little bit of, of tissue here and there if you want to maybe blend things even a little bit better. But I think that's good. You have some figures here in the crosswalk. You can make some crosswalk lines here like this. You just make them a little thicker as they go forward like that. A little bit thinner as they go in the distance there. Like that. And then maybe a little bit of red too in the... Add a little bit of red here and there. Just because we made the faces red, we want to add a little bit of that red color here and there in the painting. Just to kind of give a little bit of... Harmonize, you know, we want to harmonize our colors a little bit. So, trust me, you add a little bit of that red, cadmium red and yellow ochre, just a little bit around the area here and he, here and there, right around this section, and it'll make things look great. And then you add here, we'll do like a there's a red lamp color there for the light that adds a sparkle of color. Then we're going to do a green, let's do some green too. So I'll rinse my brush off and get in some Viridian Green. Let's do some Viridian Green. There's also a green, beautiful green light here too. Like that. And then a little bit of yellow ochre or raw sienna for that center color there for the caution light. So we have our beautiful figures. We have our figures walking across here. Maybe there's a little bit of a little bit of blue and I miss adding a little bit of color. A little bit of blue. Like that. A little bit of splashing maybe some. Maybe we have some more. But again, I like I said, this is kind of a fast. We have a we have a fun time here. Okay, I'm just going to try to add a little bit of, high, you know, some detail, a little bit of darks in there, just underneath the windscreens, the windshields of the cars. Maybe there's a little bit of yellow ochre where the lights are, like that. A little bit of sparkle of color. Okay, that's it. So you can see how fun watercolor is. It's really a great medium. Hope you're going to try it. Hope you're going to stick here on my channel. Chris Petri, watercolors. We're working every every week, week after week, month after month, year after year. We're here. We're doing nothing but watercolors, and we do everything in a methodical and detailed approach so that you learn all of the techniques and methods that you need to for your watercolors. And uh, if you're just starting out, this is my uh, uh, promise to you. I'm going to continue to make beginners series videos each week. And if you're more of an advanced painter and you've been around a while, but you still are learning quite a bit from my videos, you'll keep seeing my advanced uh, videos. Okay. So we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.